By the rivers of Babylon, we lay down and wept. We wept for thee, O Zion. The words of the psalmist remind us of the traumatic and pivotal experience of exile for the Jewish people, particularly in light of the exile that occurred in the late 500s BCE, when the temple in Jerusalem was sacked and burnt by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and when the people of Judah were taken into captivity. But it is also reflected in the trauma of the destruction of the second temple around AD 70, and of the disastrous consequences that led after the Bar Kokhba revolt that then followed. The experience of exile in the life of the Jewish people has been a fundamental narrative of what it means to be, in the words of Moses in the land of Midian in the book of Exodus, I believe in chapter 2 of memory serves me, to be a stranger in a strange land. And as we enter into that mystery of seeing that sense of identity with a culture and yet being in some sense foreign or alien in a sense, being persecuted, being hunted down, being subjugated at times, uh, while at the same time being embraced as we see in Babylon with Daniel um, and being elevated to high status leads to a complicated relationship for a people group with uh, their surrounding culture. I would say, while our readings this week have focused on Nehemiah, Ezra, and on Ezekiel, I am more minded to reference Daniel here. Uh, In the aftermath of the exile, on one hand, the Babylonian court tends to, uh, on one hand, try to assimilate Daniel and his companions into the Babylonian culture, giving them the best kinds of Babylonian food, uh, trying to indoctrinate them into Babylonian religion, changing their names, even trying to to compel them at some points to uh, adopt uh, a form of what would be considered from a Jewish and biblical point of view idolatry, as we see in the case of the intent of intimidating Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that fails. And yet... At the same time, as I just pointed out, we see that Daniel and his companions are raised to high status, uh, that they are highly respected, that they are honored in their respective work as administrators, as government officials, and yes, in the case of Daniel, as a prophet. And so in this complicated relationship, we see throughout the history of the Jewish people, um, even in the context of the United States, for example, um, this deep sense of, at times, grave persecution and alienation. Um, we, we saw a horrendous acts of anti-Semitism that even continue to this day. And at the same time, we see a, a deep cultural respect or fascination uh, with Judaism, both culturally and religiously, in, in art, in media, Uh, in movies and books, uh, through eminent figures who identify as Jewish. So it's this interesting narrative that's ongoing as um, one who has an aunt from Tel Aviv, Israel, whose younger cousins are ethnically uh, and uh, religiously Jewish in some sense. I would argue that, you know, observing their experience and hearing about their experience uh, can be very moving in light of these biblical texts, and it gives me a, a different perspective hearing their personal testimony. Uh, the other element, which I think is quite fascinating, is in what way has this narrative um, been essential for other people groups throughout time? We have two articles I want to respond to here, uh, one by, a, I believe, a Catholic cleric by the name of Jean Ruiz, on the um, adoption of Nehemiah and its complicated relationship with uh, housing projects in Brooklyn, uh, particularly during the 1970s and how that was carried out for Hispanic and African American communities uh, and many who were suffering at the time and what was a joint 
uh, Lutheran, uh, Baptist, and Catholic effort. And also, at the same time, an article on Ezekiel uh, by an author named Ruth uh, Poser, I believe to be German, and basically explaining how, well, the book of Ezekiel in its literary structure and design reveals tendencies towards um, reactions to psychological trauma in light of the prophets uh, becoming mute, unable to speak at points, and other uh, behaviors uh, that point to uh, attempts to cope with the, the horror that has just taken place. And what I would argue in both cases for uh, exile as a means of psychological analysis, uh, one almost being allegorically exiled from one's own self or exiled from one's uh, sense of stability. And then the other, in, in light of the racial uh, socioeconomic context of Latino and African-American communities, particularly in light of their experience and flight uh, from uh, their country of origins to the United States. What's fascinating in, in both uh, cases, we find that the texts of Nehemiah and Ezra that speak of tensions between people groups and the rebuilding of a civilization in Judah and the experience of what it is to return to one's homeland, um, that these narratives of travel, of persecution and resistance are very relevant and very applicable. Uh, they teach us quite plainly that the biblical text is hardly in some sense remote. I mean, the languages and the place names maybe, but we find that there is a need to try and rebuild perhaps urban centers and cultures that have uh, become materially uh, unadvantageous, to put it mildly, uh, to, to people living in peace and in health of mind, body, and soul. And we could see great parallels with the Ezra and Nehemiah passage. But at the same time, we also see uh, elements of prejudice. Um, we have Sam Balak's attempt to try to prevent uh, these exiles from returning home. And what does that look like in terms of trying to harass uh, the Jewish people who are returning? Uh, or, for example, uh, the ethnic experience of Latino populations. Uh, this isn't directly mentioned in the article by Ruiz, but coming through uh, the, you know, the so-called border and the way in which their traveling is um, often hampered by political forces that uh, tend to use terms like mob or horde to describe these human beings who are suffering terrible degradation, terrible suffering. Uh, so you see parallels of this in the biblical text. And I would argue a closer examination of the text reels, reveals how relevant and how central they are to our, our, our current understandings of psychological and political movements of people, hopefully into a position where they can find rest and they can find comfort and peace. And as ministers of God, it is our sovereign duty to ensure that we become voices, uh, not just of social justice, but also too of reconciliation. I hope this has been insightful and I look forward to hearing from all of you soon.